Hey, Shalom Israel. Hopefully everyone had a good Shabbat. Um, it's kind of late here in northern Indiana. But I decided to get on here and do a quick video on a kind of popular calendar that's kind of popped back up again called the Zadik or some people call it the Enoch calendar. Um, kind of a family of solar calendars. Um, that's kind of uh, a lot of people are asking questions about. So I wanted to do a short video kind of covering the Zadok calendar today. The one of the things I want to mention right off the bat is that for a lot of people new to um, kind of the spirit and truth movement, um, especially coming into the understanding of Messiah's word, his Torah it being applicable to our lives is that we realize we inherit a lot of lies. And so everything's up for question and that's understandable. However, I do warn people, uh, a lot of these extra biblical books, although they're very fascinating and uh, quite honestly, they're kind of entertaining to read. And sometimes they can even encourage your faith. I really like the book of Yasher, for example. Um, but uh, you do need to be careful that uh, there are a lot of things in, for example, Book of Jubilees, Enoch, and whatnot, that do not line up with the scripture. And I do have to warn people that whenever you're studying the scripture, especially you're coming to, you're trying to understand a very specific topic, especially with like something like the calendar, you have to start with the scripture first. If you're going outside the scripture to create a theory and trying to pick scriptures here and there to support that theory um it's just backwards so um start with the scripture first um, it's not bad to have historical information that lines up with scripture but one of the things that's very common when a lot of people use solar calendars they're using a whole bunch of extra biblical information and very little to no scripture at all and that's a major major issue um I don't have time to get into both uh, everything wrong with the Book of Jubilees and Enoch, but since we're going to be talking about the calendar, I, I will pick out just a few things in the Book of Jubilees. There's a lot of other things that um, definitely be red flags um, and a reason why this book did not get canonized. Um, anyways, I want to cover... Um, the Sabbath first, just a few tidbits on the Sabbath, and there's more than what I'm covering. So if you want to read the Book of Jubilees, you, you'll 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 definitely find more than what I'm bringing out. Um, a lot of additions to the Torah, and uh, this is something Messiah specifically talked about. It's mentioned in Deuteronomy uh, four two: "You shall not add to or take away from the Torah that we are able to keep the commandments of Yah." Um, and so Messiah was really on the people in his day and age that were adding to the Torah. They, they were not actually keeping the instruction. They were keeping their traditions. And uh, obviously, the Apostle Paul was dealing with this in the book of Galatians, uh, coming out of uh, that uh, pharisaical um, group that had added many, many extra laws uh, to the scripture and made it really a burden. And uh, those things we need to be very, very careful about. So one of the things I want to point out is this is in the book of Jubilees, chapter 50, verse 12. And I kind of spliced this a little bit. You can go there yourself and read the whole context. There's actually more there that uh, Messiah would actually, I guess, been in violation of many things that the book of Jubilees has to say. But this one's just interesting to me. It says, every man who does any work on it referring to the sabbath days or whoever fasts on the sabbath day shall die now i i'm, I'm whoever invented or came, came up with this book of jubilees um this man-made teaching obviously did not think through this point very well because we know that moses fasted for 40 days we know elijah uh, eliyahu fasted for 40 days we know Daniel fasted for 21 days, and obviously this includes Sabbaths. And obviously later on, Messiah fasts for 40 days. And so the Book of Jubilee is basically saying these people are sinners and worthy of death for fasting. 
on the Shabbat. So it, it's things like this that are just absolutely ridiculous. Um, so um, you can see why, you, or you will see why, this book can be a major problem when it's basically saying Messiah, the, the spotless lamb of Elohim who had no sin, was, I guess this book is declaring that he was a sinner worthy of death. So you can, yeah, definitely see why this would be an issue. I'm going to just kind of flip through a few more of these. <laughs> this one's kind of a side note for the guys, if, especially if they're really pro the Zadok calendar. Uh, are you really wanting to take everything the book of Jubilee says? It says, you shall do no manner of work in it. Again, the Sabbath, whoever has sex with his wife shall die. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Just something to think about there. Anyways, um, moving along. Um, now, this one's uh, very serious. And this is a common false teaching in the Hebrew Roots Movement even today. I'm going to go ahead and read it, then uh, I'll talk about it a little bit. It says, remember the commandment which... Uh, Yahuwah commanded you concerning the Passover, you shall celebrate it in its season on the 14th day of the first month. You shall kill the sacrifice before evening. They should eat it uh, by night on the evening of the 15th from the time of the setting of the sun. This is straight up false teaching. First of all, I want to comment that Notice it says they killed the sacrifice before evening. The scripture does not say that at all. It says between the evenings, between the evenings. Um, and specifically, the Passover is on the 14th day, not the 15th day. And so this is a major error even today in the Hebrew Roots Movement. And so in Exodus 12, 22, it tells us that the night of Passover, no one was to leave their house. However, in the book of Deuteronomy 16, 1 and 16, uh, 6 and Numbers 33, 3, it tells us they left the night of the first night of unleavened bread, which is on the 15th night, they left Ramses. So when, uh, you know, Hebrew roots teachers merge the 14th, have it have Passover start at the conclusion of the 14th, going into the 15th. That that night of the 15th, they have a major dilemma. Do we stay in our home? You know, in the ancient story, did they stay in their home or did they leave that night? So there's a lot of confusion. Of course, if you know Passover is at the beginning of the 14th, there's no issue. They'd stayed in their house that night. Then on the following evening that starts uh, the first day of unleavened bread, the 15th, they left Ramses. So there's no um, issue. I have a teaching on the timing of Passover for those who would like to check it out it has a bunch of scripture you can easily figure this out um, by going through the scripture and i will link that somewhere uh, to this video for those who are interested another major issue is uh, the year and we'll, we'll get into this a little bit more it says this in the book of jubilees chapter 6 verse 32 command the children of israel that they should observe the years according to this counting uh, 364 days, and these will constitute a complete year, and they will not dis disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disrupt any feast. Um I highlighted they will not leave out any day because this is laughable. It's absolutely false. We're going to look at this here in a little bit. And this is, uh, again, a lack of honesty or maybe just complete ignorance. Um, but we're going to look at this here in a second. So just keep that in mind. Also, one of the major controversies with the Book of Jubilees, it, it redefines the biblical or the scriptural month. And uh, in Jubilees 2.9, it states that Elohim appointed the sun, dot, 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 four months. The scripture does not say that. And we're going to be looking at this. And this is, matter of fact, not only does the book of Jubilees say this, it actually flat out attacks the scriptural month as well, referring to the moon. And uh, this that's a major issue. So uh, I, I'm going to bring up two key points um, here in a second. 
um, about t- two main errors with the uh, the Zadok calendar, um, uh, re- referring to months and also the resurrection of Yushu Messiah, uh, which is highly important. Let's start off with just a few basic things about the uh, um, Zadok or Enoch or solar calendar that you need to know. Um, you can see this picture to the left. It looks like a pie or a circle. You know, the circle has three, uh, 360 degrees. And if you divide that by 12, you have 30 uh, degrees, or if this was months, 30 months in each uh, slice if they're cut evenly. However, in the... Um, now, they uh, use a inter... They intercalate a extra day... Um, between or before the solar sign um so there's four of those in the year with the um, um, spring equinox the summer solstice the fall equinox and the winter solstice so you, they end up having 364 days in a year also every year will begin on the fourth day or what we know as wednesday every year um they're uh, if we look at this uh, pie as in quarters, there's 13 weeks in each one of these quarters. Each quarter, the first two months, for example, in month one and two, they will be 30 day months. Month three will actually be, I know it says 30 down here, but again, you have to intercalate that uh, an extra day um, will be 31. So in month Four and five, it'll be 30 day months. And then in month six, it'll be 31. In month seven and eight, it'll be 30 day months. Um, but month nine will be 31. In months 10 and 11, 30 day months. And month 12, 31 days. And, and like that. Um, however, uh, we do want to. <laughs> Uh, point out some obvious things here that is a major problem. Uh, you may re- uh, remember back to the last slide how it said, or the la- last couple slides where it said they leave out no days. Well, we, we have some major issues because the solar cycle, the uh, tropical year is 365.242 or uh, 365 days, five hours, 48 minutes, 45 seconds in length. Now, after one year of the 364 day Zadok calendar, we would be one day, five hours, 48 minutes, and 45 seconds out of sync with the solar um, cycle. Now, this doesn't seem like much, but after a 25 year period, the Zadok calendar be, would be one month out of sync uh, with the season. Now, this gets interesting. So there is an issue with intercalation beyond the, uh, the four extra days added um, over a period of time. Matter of fact, over after 150 years, month one would occur in the season of autumn. So uh, Festival of Unleavened Bread would be in the fall and Sukkot would be in the spring. So in 300 years, basically the calendar would go would float around the year in a 300 year period and this is really problematic this is no different than the muslim calendars that they have the opposite issue there's a lunar based calendar they don't use the sun and so it uh, one of their uh, festivals they keep is ramadan and it can float around the calendar now Theirs shows up a lot faster. It's all over the place. I used to have friends in college that were um, part of the, uh, they were Islamic, um, they're Muslims, and they would keep Ramadan. I was always kind of curious, like, oh, wow, I thought it was like this month last year. You know, it would it would flip or flip around. So um, this Zadok calendar kind of reminds me of that. Just it it actually is missing days. They have to stuff it with days. It comes up short. And this is something that a lot of people don't talk about. And this is a major issue because this violates Exodus 13, verse 10, where it says you must keep unleavened bread in its season from year to year, which is the spring. So what do they do with all these missing 
uh, uh, days or how, how do how do they figure this? Because there's no instruction whatsoever, especially in the scripture. There's it doesn't say nothing about this, um, you know, nor in extra biblical uh, 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 literature. There's nothing about this how to intercalate all these uh, 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 days that are needed to keep this calendar in sync. Now, there's a lot of academic discussion about this, how they may have done it. But um, in reality, this is a major, major issue. Um, so, well, I want to make a comment here. Back up just one slide. Um, down at the bottom here, I have a web. There's a website that is very, uh, one of my favorite websites when it comes to the calendar. Probably my, yeah, top website I'd recommend for people that are new to the calendar, torcalendar.com. Um, which they deal with how to figure years, months, and all that. But right now they have an article on their front page called The Heir of the Zadok Calendar that will go in more, way more detail than I am here in this short talk. I'm just covering two main points, but I would highly recommend you check that out. Also, a friend of mine named Todd Bennett has a book. I need to probably put a link to it. Uh, the Point of Times of Yah, it would be very... Um, this time of year as we're preparing for Passover. Um, a lot of people are going to be celebrating in the wrong month. Um, so it's going to be important to uh, know how to sync the year. Uh, I highly recommend his book on appointed times as well. Um, one last thing I'll make a mention to, um, I'm not only going to point out the heirs with the Zadok calendar. My whole point of this is after this teaching is to show how to truly use the solar sign properly and how the ancients how the sons of Issachar would have used uh how, how they would have determined the year i'll put it that way then uh, it'll be a little series then show scripturally see dates where you can figure out how they would have intercalculated the years you can literally count it out and figure out exactly what's going on even with the equinox and stuff like that then third the third teaching will be on the confirming factor for those Karaites out there that are really big into the crops and, you know, sink in it with the new, uh, uh, the beginning of the year, the month of Abib. Um, we'll, we'll look at some case studies of if you know how to uh, intercalate the year correctly, when you, when it's appropriate to add a 13th month, then, um, then uh, you'll, you will always have a uh, bee barley, barley that is uh, ready to go. Um, when it when it's required, which is the uh, 16th day of the first month, that Omer wave offering. So anyways, I want to uh, put this in positive light. There's a reason why I'm going over this, because I'm going to be presenting more information on the Sabbath resurrection that I have not presented before. That is, uh, yeah, it, it will even give more evidence to the Sabbath resurrection in um, uh, in 34 CE. But anyways, I wanted to address this uh, Zadok calendar because uh, we will look at what how they think of the uh, resurrection, how it doesn't, it, it just comes up short in many ways. And just like this, they come up short um, and they have to stuff in days somewhere. So yeah, if someone wants to comment and see where all these days are being stuffed in to make up this different uh, difference every 300 years where it's, it's flipping around the whole calendar, like the islamic ramadan calendar but a little bit slower in doing that um i would love to hear their explanation and show the scriptural or the historical information to support their theory but anyways let's let's move along um to the scripture genesis 1 14 elohim said let lights plural come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs for appointed times and for days and years foundational scripture and unfortunately the zadok calendar um this is one of the scriptures it violates because it does not use the lights both lights to determine uh, the point of times. And this is a major, major issue, um, specifically the months. As we looked at before, they, they try to say the sun is for um, uh, uh, the months. But we're going to look a little bit closer at this and see how the moon, the month, was made literally for the point of times. 
and he made the moon, the Yerach uh, in Hebrew, four appointed times. He made the moon, the Yerach, for the appointed times, and the sun knows it's going down. We can see that the Hebrew word is for the moon is literally used here. Uh, in connection for the point of time. It was literally made for the point of times. We'll talk about the, what the point of times are here in a second. But um, when you look at this word, Yarak, the, uh, it, it literally means moon. It can also mean a month. And it literally, month and moon kind of are interchangeable. The language that we use, uh, uh, they, they uh, kind of go together. And we'll see this. Um, talks about a month as a moon cycle. Um, and these things are interchangeable. We'll look at the word Kodesh too, because I know in the Zadok calendar, they try to make a big deal of Kodesh and try to, they're trying to separate the biblical, the moon from the month. And really that that's not supported in the scriptures. Um, so the pointed times are laid out in Leviticus 23. And the big piece here to really understand is that the moon is made for the pointed times and the, the appointed times are specifically, with the exception of Sabbath, um, which is every seven days from creation, these appointed times are, they have dates. One is calculated, but for example, Passover is on the 14th day of the first moon or month. So if you're not using the moon or the month, and you're not going to be able to count out 14 days to be able to observe or celebrate Passover. Uh, the Festival of Unleavened Bread starts on the 15th day of the moon, the first moon, uh, through the 21st day of the first moon. And um, the, fest, uh, the Feast of Weeks um, is actually, uh, it will depend on the lengths of months one and two, um, but it's counted from the 16th day of the first month. And it will land either on the fifth, the sixth, or the seventh day of the third month. We'll get more into that later. That, that was a little bit more. It needs a little bit of calculation and counting involved in it. But the rest of the uh, um, the dates are uh, in on this calendar are fixed to the moon cycle, the month. The day of trumpets, Yom Trua, is on the first day of the seventh month or moon. Um, the day of atonements or Yom Kippurim is on the 10th day of the seventh moon or month. Um, the feast of tabernacle or Sukkot is on the 15th day of the seventh moon or month, uh, through the tw uh, 21st. Then, uh, the eighth day or Shemini Atzeret, um, Atzeret is on the 22nd day of the seventh moon. What I'm trying to say is. If you are not using the moon to determine the pointed times laid out in scripture, you're not keeping the scriptural pointed times. And this is the, one of the biggest issues with the Zadok calendar. They're not keeping the pointed times of Yah. They're not keeping any of these appointed times. Um, when you don't use the scripture as your foundation, you are going to be so far off. And that is really the major issue. And I want to kind of show a little bit more how the month and the moon are inner connected interchangeable in the in the language um so let's go ahead and jump on in so here in deuteronomy 16 1 it says guard or shamar the new moon um and it's hodash here um and we'll, we'll look at this word here in a second of abib this is referring to that ripe uh, crop and perform the Passover to Yehudah your Elohim for in the uh, Kodesh of that new moon or month of Abib, Yehudah your Elohim brought you out of the out of Mitzrayim by night, and literally that was on the uh, the fifteenth day of the first month, which is the first day of unleavened bread. He also on the last day, the twenty first, that that night. They crossed the Red Sea as well. So there was two leavings of, you you could say, of uh, Ramses and finally exiting um, uh, Egypt when they crossed the Red Sea as well. So, uh, but the key thing is here is this word, Hodesh or Kodesh, um, and it also means month, new moon, monthly, the first day of the month, a lunar month, 
um, and its root kadesh also means uh, to renew, to repair, to uh, make anew. And it's interesting when you look at this word um, in the lexicon, it even gets a little bit more interesting. He says to be new, um, to produce something new, also to polish a sword. Um, uh, uh, let me see here. The primary sense is that of cutting or polishing. The significance of the uh, newness appears to proceed from that of a sharp, polished, splendid sword. Now, the interesting thing with this kind of these definitions is that's exactly what a new moon looks like, a polished sword or a sickle or a crescent. When you first see the new moon, it's like uh, almost like the crowning of a baby being birthed. And matter of fact, if you study the word Rosh Kodesh, it literally gives that picture of that first fire, that, that polished sword coming forth. So even in the language, it also shows connection to the moon and the word Rosh Kodesh. So you may want to study every single letter there in the, those two words, and you're going to get a lot more insight. So in First Kings 8, 2, it is written, and all the men of Israel symbol to uh, the king or sovereign Solomon at the festival in the month of Athiam, uh, Athiam um, which is the seventh new moon. Now, uh, whenever you hear the men assembling, you know pretty much it's a festival because in Deuteronomy 16, 16, it says three times a year, all the males shall appear before Yahuwah your Elohim in the place which he chooses at the festival uh, Matzot, which is unleavened bread, at the festival of Shavuot, which is the festival of weeks, and at the festival of Sukkot, which is tabernacles. And none should appear before Yahuwah empty-handed. Now, there's actually only three festivals in the year. I know a lot of people in Hebrew roots go, oh, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of this, the Feast of uh, the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is not a feast. Um, uh, uh, Trumpets is not a feast. Uh, it says Yom Trua. It's the day of shouting. Um, Passover is not technically a feast. Um, it's a, a very uh, serious covenant meal. Uh, the feast starts on uh, the 15th. As the scripture says here, uh, matzot, it's, it's it's distinct. Through the three festivals, there are more appointed times. So we know that when it's talking about the seventh month or moon, the festival that it's talking about Sukkot here. But I want to uh, have you notice that in the Hebrew, that Yarak and Kodesh are in the same verse, and they're kind of kind of piggybacking off of one another. That the moon and the month are inner. Uh, connected. Um, they're not separated. Uh, and in the Zadok calendar, they try to pry away the physical moon from the month and say, no, the sun is the Kodesh. Um, and this is just not true. And throughout the scripture, even in some of the earliest books, we see this idea, even though our scriptures a lot of times say uh, months, when we look at the word Yarakim, for example, in the plural here, it, it basically means moons. You could say three moons. Um, here, she hid him three months or three moons, Exodus 2, 2. Also, in the book of Job, it says the same thing, number of the months. And again, it's in the plural, uh, Yarakim, um, uh, which it could be months again. But we see this word literally, that's the physical moon tied to months. Or the idea of months, which Job is one of the oldest books in the scripture. So I am allotted months. The, we see this word yarkim or yark. Um, and um, again, it, 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 the, the physical moon is fixed to the months. And I just wanted to show this. Um, First Kings 6, 37 and 38. And then the fourth year, the foundation of the house of Yahuwah was laid in the month, and we see that word, Yarak, um, Ziph, in the 11th year, in the month, uh, in the month, uh, Yarak, um, uh, Bull, 
the eighth new moon, um, Ha uh, Hodesh. Uh, so we see the Hodesh, we see Yark. The house was com completed in all its matters according to all its plants. Thus, he built it in seven years. Again, we see the Yark, the physical moon and the month inner connected they are linked together um these things are kind of interchangeable uh whether it's talking about the new moon it's talking about the moon cycle or aka the month um like for example the month of abib is the whole entire month the month in which the the crop is ripe so where from that new moon to whether it's a 29 or 30 day month that whatever month has the first fruits um, that that's uh, what was kind of known as the month of a bee. Um, it, it's not just a day. It's, it's a full month. So sometimes the word uh, is used to describe the full month, not just the new moon. Psalm 89 verse 37, it is written, it shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in the heavens. See, the moon testifies of the birth, the uh, death, burial, and resurrection of Yehushim Messiah. Without the moon, we wouldn't be able to tell uh, historical events, the timing, or anything. It's, it's with the moon and the eclipse status, with the sun as well, that we're able to tell things. See, the, the calendar is solar lunar. It's both. And so it's interesting because those who follow the Zadok or Enoch or solar calendar have the same problem that people that follow the lunar calendar. The solar calendar re kind of rejects the, the moon as a sign, you know, for these things. And same thing with the lunar calendar. They reject, kind of reject, uh, reject the sun and don't know how to use it for uh understanding signs appointing times days and years but here um, i just did a teaching recently on the birth of messiah uh, which can be quite easily figured out but the moon is of the faithful witness and it is pro it, it, in revelation it tells us that that moon was under uh the feet and this is an astronomical sign in the heavens and uh, on yom trua 3 bce uh, messiah was born and so if you didn't know when the new moon was or if you thought it was some sort of uh, a sun phase or something like that, you know, um, you're going to be clueless on what a lot of these things are. And the last thing I want to point out is uh, kind of the layout of month one. Now that I have 2024, but really the Zadok calendar, and this may be one reason why so, so many people are interested in the Zadok calendar, because for them it's convenient because every Every year, it, it, the months look the same, and they can know when Passover it is. Kind of like a, a fast food type calendar, but there's obviously pr problems with it because um, you'll notice since the first day always starts on the fourth uh, day of the week, um, tied into kind of the equinox a little bit, that Passover will always land on the third day of the week. And that's what we see here on the 14th, third day of the week. Now, here's the problem. Now, just because I'm showing 2024 this year, this is consistent. The way they, the, uh, the Zadok calendar, Enoch calendar, the way they understand this, this is how it looks every single year. So going back to the death, burial, and resurrection year of Messiah, 34 CE, they would say it looks just like this. Well, we have a massive problem because if Passover is on the 14th, and we count three days and three nights. And we also understand the prophecy of the third day, which both these things, they're two distinct prophecies that conclude on the same day. And the, the resurrection date is locked down. I mean, if anyone doesn't have the 17th day of the first month of the resurrection, then they are absolutely incorrect. Their math is off. You can know that instantly. If they have any other date besides the 17th of the first month, they are wrong period um so the problem the major problem with the zadok calendar when we look at the 17th day um uh we count three days and three nights from the 14th and also knowing that the third day of unleavened bread is on the 17th um to fulfill the third day prophecy 
Um, however, the scripture tells us the Messiah rose on Mia Ton Sabaton, um, which can be translated three ways. And all three of the ways that it's translated, the Zadok calendar falls short. Notice that um, the 17th day on the Zadok calendar is on the sixth day of the week. Um, so Mia Ton Sabaton, the correct way to interpret it is the first of the Sabbaths, and it's referring to the first of the seven Sabbaths, count Shavuot. Is the, the sixth day the first of the Sabbaths? Absolutely not. Um, so, no. And another way it's translated in a lot of common English versions, it says the first day of the week. Is the sixth day the first day of the week? Absolutely not. And another way it's translated is the first of the week, because the word uh, day is actually inserted in the text. It's not really there in the Greek. So the first of the week. Is the sixth day the first of the week? No. So it's not the first of the Sabbaths. It's not the first of the week. It's not the first of the week. So the math on the Zadok calendar, for many different reasons, whether you're talking about the intercalation, uh, the you know, the days they need to fill in, um, or the fact that this does not line up with Scripture whatsoever with the death, burial, resurrection, the the Zadok calendar just comes up short. Period. Um, and these things, for me, I just dismiss the solar calendars uh, because they have met massive issues that they still haven't figured out yet. So they need to figure out where they're stuffing those days. Um, uh, I'm not going to talk about the four they've already intercalculated, but um, the intercalation of all those other, um, you know, in uh, 150 years, um, you know, having their uh, festival float around uh, uh unleavened bread to you know the fall um uh, and sukkot in the spring yeah that's a major issue so where and how do they stuff days into their calendar i would i would love to hear that explanation but i really don't too much care because it's pretty much a man-made calendar so um anyways when we come back what we're going to do is look at how the ancients how the sons of Issachar understood uh intercalation how do you, when is it appropriate to add a 13th month to the calendar and also we'll look at uh, some historical uh, examples of dates in scripture i'm not talking about dates outside of scripture dates in scripture and showing that there is proof or also that there was times when they would have a 13th month and we know this because the math um so and then uh, for those who are, you know, kind of come from the Karite background or really interested in the crop stuff, we'll look at the confirming factor. I will say the crop is not the determining factor for the calendar, but it's a confirming factor. So you will have a bee barley if you know how to um, intercalate the years uh, correctly. So hopefully this helps and um, look forward to sharing these uh, upcoming uh, teachings on how to intercalate the year properly, and then share uh, updated uh, information on the Sabbath resurrection. By the way, knowing how to intercalate um, these uh, the year is the foundation to understanding the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahushua Messiah. So until next time, shalom.